Welcome, welcome, game replays, and modern combat mod, and all the awesome devs at Black Sand Studios, welcome. We are here at the finals, semis and finals in fact, live cast show for the second tournament for modern combat mod, and we are in for a treat. This is brought to you exclusively by the Frontline Network, presented by myself, Tommy, and as always, Fatal Saint in the chair next to me. What's up, Fatal? What's up, Tommy? I'm in the chair next to you. What the fuck? The chair next to me is empty. <laughs> well, you're a fucking ghost, you. Fuck yeah. I'm all about that ghosty shit. But we are here at this awesome... Uh, Day. I mean, we've been waiting for this for quite a while. The second tournament got going this weekend. It started on the Saturday, uh, and um, well, it's uh, it's been quite a tournament. There was quite a uh, low turnout, but it was it was definitely quality over quantity. If you look at some of the players in there, Dev M, Sandland, Barton, it was you know uh, Jim, lots of experts in there from Vanilla Coh, but. They quickly realized, if they didn't realize before, that Modern Combat Mod is very, very different to uh, to vanilla. And uh, it's time to show all you folks at home just how different it is. So, today in this first game, we have Barton PL versus Sandland. Uh, now, Sandland was the winner of the first Modern Combat tournament. Uh, they he went into the final against Dev M. I don't remember Barton even playing in the last one, but he's doing very well so far in the brackets. Um, and so I'm really excited about this game. What do you think? Oh yeah, I do believe it's a good game. We know Barton from Vico being a very good player, and also Sandland obviously winning the first Modern Combat tournament. Only that is justifies his greatness at this mod. I have to say, he plays some. We did cast one of the the final final game of the finals for the Modern Combat Attorney number one with Sandland versus DevM, and both of those players pretty much excelled for not having played a mod for so le for so long. Yes, yeah, very true. Um, now we can talk a little bit about what map we happen to be playing on. Uh, some of you will have already realized from me panning around the map. Uh, what map this is, but we can talk a little bit about that in a minute as we are getting off to a bit of a late start. I do apologize. This is my first time as both a sender and a caster. Um, I'm, tr I'm trying new and frightening things, uh, but it's... Uh, I think we finally got there. This is the also a 1080p stream, so as it's game replays, game replays, COH is a partner. Um, of uh, of Twitch TV, so you can adjust it to 720p or whatever your net can handle. Uh, but please do tell us how the 1080p is going. I'll have to get Fatal to check the chat intermittently because I can't. Uh, but someone to check the chat intermittently just to see if there are any problems. If there are any problems, sound problems or anything like that, do give us a shout. Otherwise, we we won't know. Uh, but other than that, I think uh, we should get this kicked off. Uh, Barton versus Sandland at the five second mark. Are you ready? I am ready. All right, let's start this in three. Two, one, unpause. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now I said we'd talk a little bit about the map, and if you take a look, you'll notice we are on Argentan Crossroads, as designed by White Flash Reborn. And, well, an awesome map it is too. I mean, it's begun to feature it quite heavily in many tournaments. Uh, I know the WMD uh, Invitational is going to be featuring Argentan quite heavily. Um, previous 1v1 Game, game replays, official game replays, tournaments have featured it, and it is a very, very good map. Um, it's a very, well, it's a very cool map, but I guess you guys aren't here to talk about a map that you've probably seen before. You're here to see what this mod is all about. It's Modern Combat mod, if you haven't seen it before. It is very different. It is a total conversion mod, and they have done a fucking brilliant job, if I can say so. There is no other way to describe how much has changed from vanilla. It's, it's, a, it's a new game. It's, it's, it's a whole new game, for all intents and purposes. Uh, you have the PLA, Chinese, uh, which Barton is playing as. They have slightly weaker early engineers, like Pioneers. Um, they can build a Tier 1, where they can get snipers and MGs and uh, militia out, which are, are kind of a bit... Think of, think of MP40 Volks and, uh, and a Ketten-type unit, but with a gun. Um, so, Fatal, why don't you tell us a little bit about the US faction? Well, straight off the bat, the US faction, you're actually able to build your buildings, tier 1, 2, tier 4, in 
connected territory to your headquarters. So you don't have to build them inside the base which Sandland is doing right now. You could opt for building it like, like say on Semwa for example, where me and Tommy played against each other the other day. Uh, both of us, when we were US, we put our barracks on the cutoff, the, the famous Semwa cutoff there, just outside of the base to the right of the bridge. So it's possible to reinforce like heavily, like from a 4 HQ, but it's actually your racks building that can produce both units and you can heal from the barracks as a US. There's a lot of nifty things in modern combat that are different from Vico. Yeah, and that ability to place the barracks out in the field is is one of the big, big draws of the faction. Now, Sandland has opted to place it in his base sector, which has advantages of its own. Obviously, you don't get the, the in-field reinforcement, but it means that you can get that first rifle out a bit faster. And this is a rifle squad that he is building. This is a, uh, a Marines to the battlefield. Um, these guys are very, very strong. They cost 300 manpower. Think of them as like Grens, but you get them very early on. They're very costly but they are very strong as well. They scale very nicely throughout the whole game. Uh, they're useful from the start to the finish. They're very good at long range. Long range, they'll beat out pretty much anything that PLA can throw at them, uh, besides a sniper. Um, and you can see them engaging these, uh, these low health uh, pioneer type units. Uh, even at long range, um, even though there's two of these units, they're, they're going to get ripped up by this, by this rival squad here, and they're not going to take very much damage. As I said, they are expensive, but they're good. They're strong as well. Yeah, very, very strong US early infantry, and you can also build MGs and the Humvee from the tier 1 as US, but you cannot build snipers, so a strong point that I find at least is going for, you know, an early sniper for PLA to drain the manpower of your opponent's uh, riflemen by killing them with your sniper efficiently and fast. Uh, but militia spam is also a form of a tactic, I guess, you know, militia, because you can build them so fast and they're so cheap to reinforce, you can actually outnumber your US opponent with just sheer numbers. Yeah, quite early on you can get a very good advantage uh, just numerically with these militia. As I said, these militia are very close range units, the rifles, total opposite end of the spectrum. It really is like the Volks rifle dynamic. If the, if the rifles can engage uh, from long range the, uh, the militia, then they'll win quite handily. But if the militia get the jump on the rifles, and the rifles are going to hand militia ass back into their faces. So it's um, it's very much a, a micro engagement here at the beginning. And you see Sandland getting now a third rifle squad. Remember how I said expensive these guys were? So he's making a big commitment. This is 900 manpower worth of tier one in addition to the three engineers that he started with just to begin with. So we'll probably see uh, a quick tier one as well from Barton. Yeah, Barton has opened up to, for two militia, but he's not going to continue the militia spam, and he's going for that early sniper. So two militia out, which is fairly fast to build, and they're fairly cheap. 240 manpower, I do believe, compared to the Rifleman 300. You yeah. can get a very early sniper, and you have no fear of counter snipes until US takes up to tier 2. So he's doing a kind of like a Volk Volk sniper build. The only thing is, it doesn't quite work out as well as, act as the real Volk Volk sniper does, because the militia... Obviously, they aren't long-range units, so they're not something that you want to keep at bay. They are very much MP40 Volks, and that's how you should treat them. They really are for charging. Um, there's lots of them, and they're all quite low health, but they do a lot of DPS at close range. But now that Sniper's out, yep. so he can really start draining. Against this rifle spam, he's going to do a really, really good job, actually. Yeah, and there's no Humvee on it, which is like the, the counterpart of the Vico Jeep, kind of. Well, the funny thing is, I mean, if you read the tooltip for the Jeep in Vico, it's like, excellent versus support weapons ah, and snipers. Yeah, but the tooltip doesn't <laughs> count, Tommy. The tooltips are all fucking retarded sometimes. Uh, I love I love the, CO, the VCOH tooltips. I mean, I, I love the developers of this game, but really, some of those tooltips. It's like, get, get a mortar when you bought an MG. You can use the mortar to hit the suppressed units. It's like, yes, I suppose in a skirmish game against the AI, this would work. Maybe, <laughs> but against a human AI, he would probably retreat when he gets pinned. Ooh, double snipers out from Barton. This is going to be yeah, really effective, sniper. actually, against this rifle spam. Uh, they, these guys are expensive to reinforce. I think they're 27 manpower to reinforce. One of the devs in the chat will have to uh, uh, correct me there. I know we've correct got Fire Sparks in there. Yeah. We've got uh, Dark Blade. He's the mod lead uh, to go over from Uncle Sam. Uh, a few months back, but now we have these nasty, nasty double snipers out. But tier two is out from Sandland. We should talk a little bit about the tier two, as uh, he's the only one that's teched so far. Uh, this mechanized headquarters from here looks a lot like the motor pool, but it's a very, very different purpose to the motor pool. This is very much your 
your Krieg barracks. It's the safe tech. You've got, um, it's fairly easy to get out. You've got this, um, you've got javelin teams, which are your AT. They're quite strong AT. They scale very well. Think of them as, uh, think of them as like Shrek Wrens. You've got um, snipers, uh, which are different to the PLA snipers. The PLA snipers are exactly the same as Vico snipers. Um, they function in the same way with their cloak and their shooting. Everything's the same. The US sniper, though, costs 250 manpower, so it's a fair bit cheaper. Um, gives less XP when killed, but can only cloak when in cover. Once it's cloaked, it can move around out of cover, and it can shoot from that cloak. Um, but uh, So that it allows you to get a counter snipe off, but you can't use it quite in the same way. Most of the time, if you're just popping heads, you're going to be running around uncloaked, so you are at risk from a counter snipe yourself. Um, but they are cheaper as well, so they're a bit easier to, to, to field. They're not so much of an all your eggs in one basket uh, unit. What we have so from Sandland, this striker infantry carrier, this is basically a hard track, although uh, the interesting thing, the thing that really struck me actually, it seems kind of minor, but when I first played Modern Combat, I realized that the hard tracks don't need to be garrisoned in order to get the gunner. So they're, um, they're, they're actually pretty, uh, they're, they're pretty useful. Uh, that top gun is actually pretty good against these lower health militia. You can see he's chasing all the way back into the base here, and he may even finish off this, this militia squad. Oh, he's had the, Barton has to upgrade for the healing, but he did not have time to reinforce that militia squad, which goes down in the base. But except for that squad, there's one engineer squad as well with one man, but he's very healthy and he's reinforcing at the moment. And the striker's gonna take too long to kill an engineer squad, which is fully healthed and fully manned as well. We do have the militia forced off in the center by two engineers, and the combat engineers from the US, they are fairly strong. You have to consider them to be a, a fairly good combat. Uh, unit, especially if you upgrade them with shotguns, which are, uh, you know, shotguns. the counterpart to a <laughs> flamer. Yeah, the shotguns are seriously devastating at close range. Yeah, they, they're expensive. They cost 700, uh, sorry, 75 munitions. Um, so more expensive than your average flamer. It's not something you can get really quick. It's more of a sort of a mid-game tech, really. But the combat engineers, they cost 220 manpower, but they're a four-man squad. And as Fatal said, they're, they're pretty strong. You know, you can have two of them, and they, they will just about see off a militia squad. But if he charges, he, he'll probably still win. But if he's a bit wounded and you're fully health, then, then yeah, you'll, you'll probably win. So what you see here, uh, this is the, the equivalent of the Javelin team, but from the PLA. This is their kind of, this is their bazooka team, if you like. Um, and they carry one RPG, these Tank Hunter squad. Uh, it's four of them. You can upgrade them to have a second RPG for 50 munitions, which is exactly what Barton's done. If we zoom in and have a look at these, frankly, awesome models. Actually, notice, these are the only black guys you will ever see in COH. Think about it. <laughs> um... But uh, besides that, uh, we have this uh, combat engineer and rifle squad engaging this uh, militia over here. The snipers are together with a combined 10 kills, uh, so popping off heads. But Sandland seems to have done a fairly good job of mitigating the damage that he's taking from them. Uh, he's got a sneaky Humvee parked at the edge of the map on the left side as well, and that's exactly where the snipers are. They Ooh. are guarded, however, by the capping tank hunters with a double RPG upgrade. It's not going to be that easy, but if you can force off the RPG teams and maybe the engineers, uncloak them and then continue chasing them with a the Humvee and even meet maybe with the striker inside of his base. But at the moment, Sanon is repairing his striker at the bottom of the map. Both of the snipers retreat with massive force of infantry from Sanon engaging everything from Barton on the left side. Yeah, that forcing was a him nice to retreat push everything. There. That was a very nice push. Uh, we've got some minesweepers from combat engineers, very standard, same as Vico, those minesweepers. Um, yeah, so yeah, they can also throw demolition charges, I do believe, with that upgrade. Yeah, they, they, they throw satchel charges, I think. Um, like, same as We do have regulars satchels. out for Barton as well, and they are upgrading at the moment with the marksman rifle, which means you can... It's like a recon snipe. Yeah, the, the these guys, uh, these are the, the match for rifles. Similar. They're fairly they'll they'll, t they'll take a, a rifle, they're stronger than a rifle squad at long range, especially if you give them this marksman thing. You can see that little marksman ability just appeared in the corner of their icon there. Um, that means one of them will now carry a Barrett 50 cal, which hopefully I'll be able to get a nice zoom in on there. Oh no, no it's not a Barrett 50 cal, it's, it's something else. It's like a type. Oh, that's for the green braze. Yeah, it's, it's a type something. Um, but it, yeah, you can fire it off for a, a price per use 25 munitions recon snipe. But it also works passively, each shot doing half damage to a single unit of riflemen. So, and you can upgrade with two of them. 
So, if well, he, just... he might be in trouble here when he's running down the center. He gets shot once in the back. But it's fairly durable. <laughs> it takes enough EG, but it, it's it's strong. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> no problem. It's just an RPG, man. It's old. Some balance over realism, people, before you, before you cry in the chat. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, no, tank hunters are fairly useful. We just I just actually saw in the corner of my eye tier three just tech for Sandland. There's only three tier three tiers for, for US. Um so a bit like Brits, they only have three places to build units from. The third tier gives some of it gives the single coolest unit in the American Arsenal though, and it's something that I really hope we do see because it's um it's the Bradley. The Bradley that you've probably seen in pictures and games and stuff. It looks so fucking awesome. So Whoa! Rifle Ooh. squad goes down near the, the little carriage there. That was not good for Sandland. And as you can see, he, Sandland is actually building his armor headquarters outside of his base sector now, is there? So it is possible to build any building from the US as it connected to your HQ, I, I, I guess. At least you, if you have control of the sector, at least. As long as, yeah, as long as you have control of the sector and as long as you're connected, you can see this tank depot type building over here, the armored headquarters built uh, way off in the corner. I guess if you spread out your base buildings and there's less chance of your opponent finding them, so you could like keep building units and your opponent would be like, where the hell is he building stuff from? <laughs> Where's it coming from? I scout out his base, <laughs> but I can't see his base building. I've killed his what base with, with the stew equivalent. No, don't worry, there's no stew equivalent in this game. Not that I've discovered. Well, there's Paladin tank, but that's more like a Hummel, I guess. Yeah, it's more like a Hummel. Yeah. More artillery-ish. Don't worry, we'll, we'll hopefully but get to see all of As you can see these. also, yeah, also you can see if you look at the striker vehicle on the left side, it's actually upgraded now to a fire support vehicle, so it gets a better top-mounted gun. It doesn't have a gunner thing. Yeah, the Humvee actually did the same, if I can find that. Yeah, you can oh, see yeah. the Humvee. Yeah, Humvee can upgrade if you go to tier... Th you have to go to tier... Th Two to be able to upgrade the Humvee gun. Yeah, um, but then you can pay 50 munitions if your Humvee Micro is good enough, because obviously it, it's it's sturdier than the typical Jeep, um, and you can keep it alive all game if you're a bit careful with it. But yeah, you can see the gunner yeah, is actually Yeah, but it does take a lot of it sometimes, especially from like close quarters. If you run into two squads of like militia or something at close quarters, the health goes down fairly quickly. Yeah, militia have to be will pretty careful. It up pretty fast. These snipers from Barton, still alive, 10 and 11 kills respectively, so they're really putting in the hurt on these rifles. Sandland actually struggling a little bit for uh, for manpower, but here is the Bradley, it's about to pop. This is so Ooh, he's getting a Bradley. Yeah, this is actually going to really fuck up Barton, actually, because he doesn't really have the AT to deal with it. And does he only have a single tank hunter squad? Yeah, he has, he has two tank hunter squads. I'm not sure if the second one is upgraded with double RPGs as well. I do not believe so. He's definitely got one double RPG squad, but here is the yeah, Bradley. It's in the house, so I can actually see. If you, if you look just outside of uh, Sandland's cutoff, which was just capped by some uh, regulars, uh, he's in the house with a one tank hunter squad, another squad is in the center, faffing about. But yeah, there are fairly not much of a match against the Bradley, at least not in a 1v1. He really needs to, needs to uh, pair up his two RPG tank hunters to be able to deal with this Bradley somewhat. Although if you look at the map As you can see, control, it just though, bounced. I mean, uh, Barton is really taking good, like, he's really taking a lot of map control. Uh, I know people were saying that PLA was underpowered earlier on in this tournament, but he's doing a really good job here of taking and holding territory, using these double snipers to really plug away. There's the shotgun upgrade for once we're seeing there, and these combat engineers engaging these tank hunters at close range in this building. Shotguns, they're no flamethrower, but they do decent damage versus garrison units. But actually, the tank hunter squad beats them out, and is now doing quite a lot of damage to this Bradley as well, now down to just 20% health there. RPGs, they tend to bounce more often than not on the frontal armor, but from the rear armor, they're really good. So in a lot of ways, they're like bazookas. Great if you can get them to penetrate, but kind of suck if they don't hit or if they just bounce, which they tend yeah, to Sano's do. Yeah, has got a sniped own at the moment, so I guess he's tired of uh, he's the tired two the PLA snipers. snipers. Yeah, he needs to get a counter snipe off to stop the the drain on his manpower, especially considering he lost the whole entire rifle squad. I don't think he actually ever replaced it either. So he's basically got combat engineers for capping and some rifles. Yeah, he's still, he actually, yeah, after that loss of a rifle squad, he's down to just his combat engineers and a single rifle squad when it comes to uh, capping stuff, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, this... God, but look at the map. Barton is owning everything. His armor workshop is up as well in his base. 
And he's oh, got the boy. first Type 59 main battle tank, which is gonna tango with that... Uh, oh, with this thing Bradley won't just tango with a Bradley, it will fucking steamroll a Bradley. I mean, just yeah, look at the size you of know, it. The Bradley can shoot back a little bit on the rare armor and do, you know, minor damage, just like, you know, Pumas can do on M10s and stuff, you know, just minor deflection damage. But you can also use, the, you can also upgrade the Bradleys with Tope missiles. Yeah, you get the Tau missiles uh, are a global upgrade for all your Bradleys, but they are a cost per use. Uh, for 50 munitions, you can fire... Oh, oh Counter no! Counter snipe! Oh, wow. Is that sniper he, wearing body armor? He saw the sniper with it. the tank hunters. <laughs> body armor did not save you now. Uh, he saw them with tank hunters in the building where Sandlot took a shot and then retreated. So he built one of those, the tier one bikes or the little car thing for that PLA has and just decloaked them and got the counter snipe. I think the first counter snipe actually missed, but the second one went in. And here's the well, type that I'm trying to snipers. protect. Oh, it's about to run into a sniper. Mine there, it hits a mine, destroyed engine on that Humvee. That was actually like an anti-personal mine. Minor damage to the Type 59. Is the Humvee out of control or your destroyed engine? Oh, it's just destroyed it's engine. This destroyed engine just running around. It's actually kind of chewing up those regulars, though. He's not really focus firing it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. But yeah, now this Type 59 is going to make his presence known. You can see he took a little bit of damage on the front from that Bradley. It will penetrate occasionally. And if it gets a Tau missile, you know, 50 munitions, it'll take about 25% of the health off. But um, it's just not reliable. But what Sandland is now building is a striker, another striker. Um, this is a different variant of the striker. This one has a uh, basically a homing rocket launcher on the top, um, and it has pretty high range. It always hits, as far as I know. Um, at least I've never seen it miss. And uh, it's it's pretty effective AT versus these medium tanks, just because you can kite it all day long. Um, but yeah, th this main battle tank is pretty strong, and there's the rocket launcher, and actually it did miss, so, um, well, color me tickled pink, as they say. Yeah, there's a few variations of the strikers, uh, and there's also one of the doctrines, I think it's close area combat, which can give your strikers cage armor, which makes them more resilient against handheld AT. That's right, yeah. Um, yeah, getting into doctrines, that'll be a whole new kettle of fish. Uh, Salmon hasn't even chosen doctrine yet, he's floating 5 CPs. Um, oh wow, really? Yeah. Has Barton chosen a doctrine yet? Yes, he has. Yes, I'm not sh exactly sure what it really go with myself, but it's the one that has the last, on the right or left side, I can't remember, uh, the last push, which costs a thousand manpower, and you get... Ah, oh, that one, yeah. Chinese no, that's, a, that's a doctrinal tank, yeah. it's um, That's a cool main battle tank. But actually, this striker now, the, the guided missile oh. system launcher is about to take taken down Oh, there. and the Bradley's taking a shot from the RPGs in the rear. He's trying to repair it, but in the combat, the Type 59 takes it out. Oh, boom, and there's the and GG. And there's the GG. Wow, I mean, I uh, hate to say it, but that was a bit of an own edge game, really, wasn't it? I mean, 20 minutes long, and those double snipers just put, just put so much hurt on Sandland early on. Uh, yeah. As I said, you know, going early snipers against some form of rifle, snow, you know, Humvees and stuff, which was built later from Sandland, at first three initial rifles, yeah. it just drains use of manpower so quickly, because the rifles are fairly expensive, as you said. Yeah, I mean, we, you can see those Javelin teams just rolling out now, but they just come too late. Um, oh, yeah, there. But... Uh, anyway, that, that game we did quite a lot of explaining of what the units were, a bit less of the play-by-play. Play. Screaming so and shouting. As, as hopefully, as we go through the evening, hopefully we'll, we'll impart uh, less information and you'll hopefully take on more and you'll all learn how awesome this mod is and we can start screaming and shouting again because that's what we're really good at um, and it's also easier. But, um, well, we hope you guys enjoyed that first game. That's game one, Sandland versus Barton. That is 1-0 to... Uh, in favor of Barton on Argentan. Uh, I know I don't have the scoreboard up. It's been giving me a nightmare all night. Um, so I'll try and fix that in the interim. But uh, we'll be back in two minutes.